if I gave you, let's say, ten billion dollars, how would you spend it? You were forced out. I forced you to spend it on dinosaur-related things. How would you spend it? Um, I mean, I'd probably drop half a billion or so on the best museum you'd ever seen. So put together a museum. You're like one of the great communicators, (laughs) one of the great scientists, and so like you would want to push forward the the whole field. Yeah. One of the ways to do that is a great museum. Yeah, but you want to. So it's twofold because. Yeah, there's the communication and the education part of it, which is something I'm I'm massive on, and I think research is pointless if you don't communicate it at some level. I'm not saying everyone needs to communicate everything. If you're working on the nuances of a calculation of the volume of a black hole or something, yeah, probably doesn't need a press release or a new museum exhibition. But fundamentally, we should be talking about our work. Um, but also, you've got to store this stuff. Um, many fossils are fragile. They need to be kept, not necessarily in climate control, but at least you want a basement that is much more even than, you know, just sticking it in a box in a warehouse somewhere. So you've got to be able to store this stuff to be able to study it, or it's kind of pointless. Um, But with the rest of that money, I'd I'd buy a ton of land. Like the, the... you know, quarries that gave us Archaeopteryx in, in Bavaria and have given us a ton of other stuff. I've worked on a load of pterosaurs, the flying reptiles from there. These these stuff are mostly commercially run or just straight up privately owned and not being commercially run. Someone's just inherited it and is just sitting on this stuff. So if somebody's building stuff on land, is, does that threaten like the damage of uh, of the, the possibility of discovering something on it? It's, it's more that they're not necessarily exploiting it with fossils in mind. Presumably you have to balance the search efforts and then the land. Buying. Yeah, but, you know, one billion on its own would go a very, very long way, almost infinitely, if you're just creaming off the interest and then funding excavations and supporting scientists who are already embed- embedded in other museums or other universities or other research institutes. So the rest is for buying up land so that they, those people can do the Yeah, work. You, you look at somewhere like, you know, Brazil, and there's, I can never remember the name of it, but there's, again, one of these zones of exceptional preservation where superlative pterosaurs fish we've had a handful of dinosaurs and a whole bunch of other stuff has come out and it's just a giant commercial mining operation and yeah when they hit a fossil when they think they're close to it yeah they stop and pull it out and they'll send it to a museum and more often they'll sell it to a museum and museums only have so much money whereas what if i owned that quarry and then i made sure everyone who worked there was trained and got a bonus every time they found anything and then i just handed everything they dug up straight into a museum so there would be some element of a crowdsource paleontology right? yeah but it's it's more that like no researcher ever needs to spend money to access that no museum no needs to go and find a new donor to give them half a million to go and buy this one specimen knowing that it might still go yeah, to some Silicon Valley billionaire's foyer or whatever. It's like, well, I own the land, so it's mine. So problem solved. Like, that that's what's in my head. It just would be wonderful to scale up the effort to where we can map out the whole sort of story of this time, because it's such a fascinating time in, in, in the history of Earth. I've jokingly written a couple of times about how all science funding in the world should go to paleontology. <laughs> And the idea being that, like, yeah, if you want to investigate black holes or neutrinos or chemical crystallography or panda genetics or whatever it is, you can do that any time you want. Like, that, that's not going to change a million years from now as it will from tomorrow. But fossils are in places that erode, and if we don't dig them up, they're gone. So we should dig all the fossils up now, and then we've got forever to study them. But if we don't dig them up now, who knows? You know, maybe there was something twice the size of T-Rex, and it sat on a hillside for six months, and then the wind got to it, and it's gone. And that was the only one that ever preserved. Well, we'll never know now. To be clear, this is a joke. <laughs> I'm not suggesting we should stop doing cancer research and physics and other things, but but it is we're we're in a fundamentally different field where our science is literally disappearing. Yeah, and I mean, there's a, I know it's a joke, but there's some truth to it. And uh, uh, on the flip side, one of the things, one of the hopes is that technology will somehow ease the search and discovery process but as you said so far most of us yeah i mean so far yeah you know jurassic park 93 
you've got that little scene where they've got the like thumper or something they call it and it it hits the ground and seismic and then they go look look here's the whole skeleton yeah they've tried it it, it doesn't really work um we've tried looking for stuff with drones that helps you getting into some inaccessible areas but until the resolution's probably better you've still got that problem of like looking you know with human eyes which are binocular and being able to you know just tilt your head completely changes how you see something in a way that flying over just just won't um i know they've tried looking so because the bones are porous they tend to suck things up so actually dinosaur bones can be really radioactive if they're in areas where there are things like uranium so yeah the, the, there are drawers which have lead boxes around them and stuff like this for dinosaur bones or just signs saying do not handle they're very low level radioactive like yeah. you'd, you'd have to like stick it in your pocket for six months to, to run any real risk but they're radioactive much more so than the background so can we do that? Mm, turns out, not really. Um, so again, may, maybe tech will advance. But for now, right. humans are and quite incredible. Yeah, we are. But also, paleo is kind of at the bottom of the pile. You know, there's not many of us. We don't have a lot of funding. It takes real money to adapt stuff. So, you know, like we're scanning stuff with MRIs and things like that in hospitals. But it mostly doesn't work very well. Because the problem you've got is, like I said, the bones take on some of the properties of the minerals in which they're embedded, which means their density is really similar. And things like MRIs of, or seismic activity is basically looking for differences in density. Well, if it's the same density as the, you know, it's like I put some green plasticine in some blue plasticine, there's going to be a bit of a join and they're going to be very, very slightly different. But ultimately, you're not going to be able to detect that through most means if you're looking for density or mass or anything like that. Well, I personally think uh, that there's few things as important to understand as the history of life on Earth. There's like books, right? There's like, yeah. a or maybe you could think of it as chapters. And then one of the chapters is the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a great extinction. I mean, so that's, it just goes that's not a that. million miles off to, I think Darwin had an analogy like that of we've, we've, we've got a few words on a few pages spread out, but between them, you get an idea of what the story is and where it's going. I think what humans don't quite realize is we may end up being just a chapter in a book. It might be our extinction event self-created, perhaps a nuclear war, perhaps robots take over, perhaps we don't know. Well, or, or, or dumb luck. I mean, the dinosaurs were doing absolutely fine until a dirty great rock hit them. And you, you can't, you know, Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis movies aside, there's only so much you can do about hey, you, that. You take that back. There's nothing <laughs> they can do wrong. <laughs> <All right. laughs>